And my friend Marie was in a Buddhist monastery for many years. So the exam to get into the monastery was one question. And the question was, What did your face look like before you were born? And her answer was, which made her get in, I was never born. It is said that those who are on a spiritual journey, which frankly includes all of us, have two births. One is the actual birth and one is the spiritual birth. The awakening. The distinct point when one feels that one's journey of life has shifted. Mostly through pain. When what we have cherished and valued and worked hard for is taken away from us. And then we see how life is so transient, temporary, fleeting. And the search then begins for what is not temporary, what is not transient and what is not fleeting. That is the birth of the spiritual seeker. Where there is a realization that peace of mind cannot be found in the flow of life because life means pleasure and pain. When there is a realization that if God came to you and said, you have two choices. One, I will give you each and every pleasure that you want in life. Each of your desires will be fulfilled. Rest of your life will go on the way it has been designed to. But I promise you I'll fulfill all your pleasures and desires. Or, oh, 
the only thing I will do for you is take away your pain. Which one would you choose? I often use the example of my own spiritual teacher who suffered migraine headaches for almost 30 years. And one day he woke up and it was gone forever. And he said at that point, I realized that the absence of pain is the greatest pleasure. So the real birth is the birth of the understanding which leads to a new way of looking at life, a new way of looking at the past, a new way of looking at the future and whatever it may bring and a new way of living in the present moment. And that birth into the new understanding of life and living happens with grace. Not something in your control. You come across something, you hear something, you read a book, you meet someone and something touches you because you can see your life's experience reflected in that. And that birth marks the end of doership, the end of blaming, condemning, hating people for what they are supposed to have done to me. With the total acceptance that everyone in my life is an instrument of God, just as I am. There are some people I get along with, there are others I don't. But the same consciousness functions through everyone, just like the same electricity functions through all the gadgets in the kitchen bringing about what each gadget is designed to produce. The toaster will produce toast, the juicer will produce juice, the way they have been designed. But without that electricity, they are dead objects in the kitchen.
Similarly, everyone in our life, it is the same electricity functioning through all of us, without which talking and listening would not happen because we would be dead. So who is talking and who is listening? That is what the Indian scriptures say. Consciousness is doing the talking. Consciousness is doing the listening. So with this understanding, you start viewing all your relationships in a new light. Especially the people you don't get along with. You accept God has made them the way they are. their conditioning, their childhood, their genetic imprint, based on which they say things and they do things, just like me. So, judging, hating and blaming drop away. You are no longer pointing fingers at people. Yes, you will say what you need to and do what you have to if someone tries to take advantage of you or does something which you don't like. But what is removed is this illusion of an individual doing something to me. So the thinking mind which used to always go into this direction of he did this to me, she did this to me, he said that to me, how dare he. That thinking mind which was running all over the place starts subsiding. The thinking mind which kept you up at night the thinking mind which when you were walking on the road, you didn't see the beauty of the trees around you or the sea on the side. Because the mind was constantly thinking, 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 thinking. Those wheels get disengaged. Because the stories are over. The stories of this person said this and that one did this have collapsed. And that is the birth of presence, which is always there, which was covered by the thinking mind. All that has happened is that that thinking mind has calmed down, subsided, is at rest. Then one is present to what is. That is truly living because one has died to the concept of doership and accusing people of doing things.